what's up tribe how you guys doing happy happy easter i hope everybody had a great easter resurrection sunday whatever you celebrate if you don't celebrate at all i hope you had a happy sunday okay let's get into this reunion first of all we've already discussed the looks <clears throat> and y'all know i am no fashionista okay I don't, I don't purport to be, but I will say that overall, this is the best, in my opinion, that the Real Housewives of Potomac has looked as a collective. That's my opinion. This is the best that they have looked as a collective. I think I did not hate anybody's look. Now, there were some that I liked more than others, but I did not hate any of them. Um, Y'all know Karen's was my favorite. Not just because I like Karen, but honestly, I just it was my favorite look. I love the hair. Um, I love that look. Her face didn't look as sharp as it did in that picture, because baby, them, them them cheekbones was. But you could definitely tell that she got a touch up. You know, she got a tune up, right? But it looked good. But honestly, I did not hate anybody's look. So for that. I, I got to give the ladies a 10. I've got to give the ladies a 10 for that. Now, I'm going to also say, I'm going to also say, DB, hold on, I'll answer your question. Um, You must, when you say you late, you must be late like you ain't been here since December late. <laughs> if you don't know the answer to that question, you must not have been here since December late. But okay, girl. Um, as a reunion, as a part one, I, I also have to say that hell, this reunion was was more was more entertaining than half the damn season was. Chuck, you know what? That's a good point. Hold on, I don't want to go out of order, but let me just go ahead. Um, Chuck, you Chuck, you bring up a good point about the death threats. Can we? Can you remind me? Make sure you remind me when we get to that, because I don't want to go out of order. I know when I start going out of order from my notes, y'all know I'll be going left, right, up and down. But I do want to address that. Chuck brings up a good point. Chuck said, "I'm wondering if Giselle's children received death threats or if Giselle inter intercept all of them. The girls didn't mention it, nor was anyone concerned when Grace left for college." Well, let me say this. I will say this. What's up, Star? I think that's a valid point. Um, and I would love to have seen some conversations about that. But we'll get there. Um, you should be really proud of Karen tonight because I am. Yeah, the grand dom hold it, held it down. Yes, Karen, and I'm not a Gizzard Neck fan. Hold on. But this is the best I've seen her. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I really, as a as a collective, as a collective. Well, NECA's makeup been two different colors the whole season, so I guess it's okay for her hair to be two different um, textures. We'll get there, though. We'll, we'll get to Giselle. I see you guys are still talking about Giselle. DB, to answer your question before I forget, on January the 1st, I started the second channel because I'm in the process of moving all of my reviews to that channel. Once that channel has been monetized, I will no longer be doing reviews on this channel. This channel is going to strictly be like celebrity news and hot topics and that kind of thing. Um, I'm not saying I'll never do content over here that relates to television shows, but the reviews and stuff will be on the Really Be TV channel. So that's why right now we're streaming on both channels. But once that channel gets monetized, everything is going to be over there. So that's what that is. Okay. So let's get into this reunion. Let me go to my notes, honey. Let me go. First of all, Andy let let the people know that there was a that they had a there was an objective in 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 learning as an educator. When we write a lesson plan, we have to write an objective with our lesson plan. Meaning, by the end of this lesson, what is our intention? For students to walk away with knowing what do we expect them to know as when they when they're done with this lesson so andy let it be known that the intention 
hey brandy hey boo that the intention of this here reunion was to find some sort of resolve and let's find a way to move forward and he told the ladies point blank listen i love you guys but as a viewer this season was hard to watch and i love the fact that andy said what everybody was thinking i love the fact that brent that andy embraced the criticism and even said not only did i hear the criticism from the viewers i feel the same way and what we need to do today is find a way to move past the problem now here is what i'm going to say to you all i think all of us can now understand why candace has decided to step back what up, Philly John? <laughs> um, I think I think we can all understand why Candace has decided to step back. And I think all of them, and I think that we can understand why the rumor is that Robin has been fired. I don't know if it's true. It has not been confirmed. It is a rumor. But generally speaking, I think we could, if, if it is true, I think we can all understand it, right? Um. So, yeah. So, that was the first thing. Then, Andy went right into what I, I think, again, I think, um, I know I mentioned it in one of the reviews about how sick I am of them always talking about sex. Like, I, I'm really sick. Like, listen, at the end of the day, we get it. Y'all are all women and y'all all have sex. And I'm not saying that we can't laugh and joke and have a little girl talk every time, every now and then. But I just feel like, like Andy said, the only time that y'all do get along is when y'all are talking about sex. And at a certain point, we are all over it. Like, honestly, I know way more about these women and their sex life than I know about my own girlfriends sometimes. Okay. I mean, I have some girlfriends that I don't know whether they swallow or not. It's just not a conversation we've ever had. I'm not saying that we've never had the conversation. I'm saying I don't have that conversation with all my girlfriends. Okay. Um, 100% don't care, generally doesn't land well. Right. When they went around the room, and first of all, the fact that everybody except for Giselle and Robin were like, yes, we're ready to move forward. We're ready to talk about it. We're ready to figure it out. The fact that Karen had to prompt Giselle and Robin to even address what Andy said, and then of course, Giselle's slick ass was like, I'm ready for accountability, meaning I'm ready for other people to take accountability, not me. And then Robin, I mean, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Like none of that plays well when your boss literally just told you. I mean, he said it in a nice way, but basically what Andy said is, I need y'all to get y'all shit together. That's what Andy said. And Robin, you of all people who... You had to know your job was on the line. Like, I don't, but there's no part of me because Robin sort of admitted it later on when they asked Robin, the, do, does she think that Juan supported her? We'll get to that in a second. But you, I 100% I believe that somebody had a conversation with you and said, girl, hey, get it together or you won't be here no more. Like, I, I really feel like that. Um, so then they got to talking about, again, the sex or whatever. And of course they would have to think about Karen, 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 this is why sometimes it'd be hard to defend you. Sometimes it really be hard to defend you, Karen, because you're not a good liar. Like you will lie, but you're not a good liar. So when they came back around to you with the whole, how many people have you had sex with in the last five years? Like what you should have said, Kern, was when that when Andy said, Well, why did it why did you hesitate so long? Why did it take you so long to answer? What you should have said was because I was taken aback at the audacity that Robin would once again attack my marriage. What do you mean? How many sexual partners have I had in the last five years when you know that I have been married to my husband for 20? So, yes, I hesitated because I in my mind I was thinking. Did this hoe just ask me that question? Is she serious? See, that's how you were supposed to address that. That's why, that's how you were supposed to address that. Not, 
Well, do you count your wet dreams? Kind that didn't even make sense. And then you repeated this shit at the reunion. You had five months to come up with a better answer. And you still talking about some wet dreams. Girl, stop it. And I love, y'all know I love me some Karen, but see, y'all know, so when people try to act like I won't call Karen out, I'm going to call her out because Karen. Now, I'm not going to address whether she be having wet dreams or not. That ain't my business. But girl, you could have came up with something better. That's all I'm saying. You could have came up with something better. Why my phone keep going off? Who is, who, I'm sorry. My phone keep going off. Who is all in my, child, it's the Instagram. What, what is going on on the Instagram? Did something happen? Hmm. Okay, sorry about that. My phone just kept going off. I was like, what's going on? Damn it. So anyway, damn it, I need to clean this area over here. It's too much shit. Okay, but but when I tell you that Karen had the best comeback that shut Robin the entire fuck up, when Robin said, "So you can't keep up with how many men, with how many people you've slept with in the last five years," and Karen said, "No, that would be one bitch." Now, I know they showed us that clip all week, but it didn't change the fact that it still gagged me. It gagged me as much tonight as it did when the first time I saw it. See, Robin, that's when you should have just stopped. Girl, that's when she should have just stopped. Because that was, listen, that was a drop mic moment. That was a drop mic moment. <laughs> Baby. The way I can't go. So anyway, there's that. So then we get into the Robin and Juan situation with Candace. Um, Robin said, when they asked her about her belief, first of all, they were like, does anybody believe Juan? And, you know, I think Mia gave the best answer. To be, listen, y'all know I be giving Mia a lot. And I do. But to be fair, Mia had a couple of good moments on the couch tonight. Now, we, we're going to get to her at the end. Oh, we're going to get to Miss Miss Mia at the end. But Mia had a couple of good points. And Mia said, it doesn't matter if we believe her. If Robin believes it, then that's all that matters. And she right. Girl, if you like it, I love it. If you like it, I love it. If you believe your husband, who the hell am I? But nobody on that stage believes none of that shit. And Robin, when you saw that clip playback, when they showed the clip playback and they showed the times when Juan yelled at you, when they showed when Juan talk, called that other woman beautiful, when they showed you talking about how he cleans out his phone, Robin, did that make you feel no kind of way? That didn't make you... They make you feel no kind of way. But Robin told the people, if y'all weren't listening, I'm here to repeat it. Robin told the people that she not going nowhere. She said, that's my man and I'm going to stick beside him. She said, we made a commitment. We've been together for 27 years and we made a commitment to stay together. And sometimes that, you know, we got highs, we have lows and it looks good. It looks bad, but we ain't going nowhere. Now that's what she said. That's what she told the people. Now, if it's true that she is no longer on the show, I'm going to tell you, I think within the next two years, we're going to find out that they separated. That's just my two cents. That's how I feel about the situation. But I am pretty certain that they sat down with Robin and told Robin she needed to give more than she'd been given to save her her, her, her job. And I think that's why we saw Juan filming. Um, we saw Juan answer the questions. You know, we saw all of that happen. But just as easily as they said that, they brought up the fact that he wasn't at the reunion. And Andy, again, when your boss brings things up, you got to take them into consideration. Andy was like, well, he's not here today. 
And Andy even went further to talk about the fact that Michael showed up even when he didn't want to show up. When there was a cheating scandal, Michael brought his ass to that reunion. Now, did Michael come to every single reunion? No, he did not. But but Robin brought, but Michael brought his ass down to the reunion. Michael brought his ass down to the reunion. Juan has only been to what? One, maybe two? How many reunions Juan have been to? We know he came to the first one. Maybe the second one. How many reunions Juan been at? Out of the eight seasons, how many reunions Juan been to? Maybe two? Baby, and why Andy? Did y'all hear Andy? Did y'all hear Andy throw that shade? Andy said, I mean, well, he not at a basketball game. <laughs> I said, damn, Andy. I mean, he ain't lie, but damn, Andy. Oh, gosh. He ain't been back since season four, so that's been four reunions. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. But Robin said she felt supportive. Okay. Then they brought up the fact that um, last year she didn't share... Yet she demands that of everybody else. And they only brought up the one example from last year where she threw, you know, she was kind of coming for Karen. But there's so many other examples. Hey, kiss my cheeks. There are so many other examples that Robin has demanded people tell all their business, yet she sat on the sideline. And once again, her boss, Andy, brought up the fact that he was like, well, you said you were waiting for Karen to bring it up. And, you know, they showed that beautiful bean footage from last season when she did that interview after the reunion was over. And she said, well, I didn't say anything because I waited for Karen. And they were like, and he said, well, don't you think if you had gotten in front of it, that might have, like, helped? Again, I think after Robin's segment, I don't think anybody is surprised that the rumor is that Robin is not coming back. think Bravo's mad about the podcast because hell they let Dr. Heavenly get away with, with, with hers I think what they're upset about is Robin didn't speak on it all season hoping that nobody would find out and she almost got away with it it didn't come out until after they had filmed the reunion remember remember that story broke I think while they were doing the reunion in those three weeks that they filmed the reunion or what, I mean, like they were showing a reunion. That's why Robin went down to watch what happens live. What I think made people mad was that she chose to speak about it behind the paywall. So one, she didn't share it. She didn't make it part of her storyline. She didn't bring it up at any point in time during the season, hoping that nobody would find out. Because let's just call a thing a thing. She was hoping that nobody would find out. Now, is Robin the first housewife? to hide stuff they didn't want to talk about? Of course not. They all do it. Let's be clear. However, comma, when the story broke, when you did choose to talk about it, you did it behind a paywall. That is what I think pissed, pissed people off. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, you not getting married on the show when literally that has been your storyline since you started that has literally been your storyline from day one literally been your storyline from day one and then when you finally do get married whether it's real or not people asking about the marriage i child i'm not one of them people i ain't one of them people that be going down to the internet looking for people's marriage certificate because i just don't care that much but the people say they ain't never found the marriage certificate i don't know whether they married or not that ain't my business but i do think once again see again here's what people got to understand um, and for the people that say, well, it's, they all have to share their life. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. That is what you sign up for. That is what a reality show is. It is supposed to be. Now, I know that over the years, things have changed and it's become more produced and all of that. I get it. But the reality is it is a show where you are supposed to be showing your life just because things happen off camera or when we're not filming doesn't mean that they did not happen. If you and Juan went through a whole situation in y'all's marriage right before y'all actually got married, which really means that that shit happened, um, it happened in more than enough time for you to film it. 
for it to be a conversation, for it to be part of your story, especially if you thought people knew. When you said, well, I was waiting for Karen to bring it up, that tells me that you you had a reasonable belief that other people knew about it. And what we found out is that this woman slid into people's DMs. Slid into people's DMs. Anyway. Um, I'm just reading some of the comments. Shout out to the 240 people in the room. If you guys have not already hit the like button, please do. Um, if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate you so much. Come on down and join the conversation, all right? So right before we went into, um, so Giselle, I mean, Robert and Candace are still arguing, child. And Candace went to pull out these damn props. And I literally wrote in my notes, sick of the props. I'm tired of the props. Like, it was cute. The first couple of times, like, Monique's binder was cute. Whether people like Monique or not, the idea of a binder was cute. We still don't know everything that was in that binder. Hell, they, from, from our understanding, they done cut half of the stuff off. Um, they done cut half of the shit off. But that was cute. You know what I'm saying? Um, there have been other shows with other props that have been cute. But at this point, it's not cute anymore. It falls flat most of the time. Child, just tell us what the hell you want us to know. All that shit. Hey, what's up, Kenneth? Hey, boo. All that shit is unnecessary. Okay, we don't need all of those things. Just tell us. So, Candace, what you wanted us to know is that Robin, is that Robin has been in um in a group text with certain bloggers. Now we know one of the bloggers allegedly is Alex Salters that allegedly um and but it sounds like it was multiple bloggers in a group chat now let me say this to y'all as a blogger let me be clear i'm just gonna tell y'all i know this ain't what some of y'all want to hear but again robin ain't the first or the only person that be sliding information to the bloggers like we like they all do it when i say all i'm not saying i can't speak for every single housewife but a lot of them do it but usually a lot of them, they have their favorite. They have that one person, maybe two people that they slide information to, right? That know is going to put the information out, right? We know that they do it. But being in a group chat, though, that's a lot, Robin. Why are you a group chat with multiple bloggers? That's a lot. That's a lot. Now, again... My other, I'm going to say the same thing then that I'm going to say the same thing now that I said then. You have a whole podcast, Robin. If there was information that you wanted out about anything that has happened on the show, guess what? Use your fucking platform. If you were irritated with what Giselle said and did about Juan, girl, why are you sending that information to another blogger? Why not have a conversation with Giselle on your fucking podcast? And if you want to put it on your Patreon and make people pay for it, fine. Put it on the Patreon and make people pay for it. Dr. Heavenly don't went to her Patreon. Listen, other um other people do um they do their blogs or they tell their business. Like if you want to put it behind a paywall, put it behind a paywall. But I don't understand why you went to a whole nother blogger to tell certain things. It does, it does make it seem shady to me phil says wait but candace was all up on house of aaron when you say was all up on house of aaron what do you mean i need you to be clear about what you're saying are you saying that candace was was sliding information in house of aaron's dms or are you saying that candace was on his platform or tweet i need you i need you to be more clear so i can address that okay Robin still has her lipstick alleyways. Ooh, not lipstick alley. Ooh. But like I said, I, I just said that they all do it. My issue isn't even that Robin did it. I mean, they all do it. My issue is, number one, why are you giving it away for free when you can make money off of the shit? You literally have a platform. You literally have a podcast where you are generating income. Why are you giving that information away when you can make your own money off of it? That is what I'm saying. I'm not talking about the fact that, that they do it. Like I said, they all do it. They all do it. 
Hell, Lisa Vanderpump, that's part of the reason why Lisa Vanderpump lost the, um left the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Because they were accusing her of sending information to the bloggers and she got mad about it, which I still think she was doing. But they all do it. The Real Housewives of New Jersey. Teresa has her bloggers that she sends information to. Melissa has her bloggers that she sends information to. They all do it. And again, when I say all, you know what I'm saying? But it just, hey, Rabu, but it just, that's my only thing. You all right? All my shit from Benny House, girl. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Lord, y'all broke up again? Yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> anyway, sorry, y'all. Um, right, that's what I'm saying. Phil, I think, I think y'all feel like I'm saying Robin is wrong for sending information to the bloggers. I'm I'm conceding that they all do it. I'm conceding that they all do it. They do it to me. People have sent me. People have sent me information. They all do it. What I'm saying is, Robin, why are you sending information when you literally have your own? Do y'all think as much as some of y'all don't like Dr. Heavenly, let's just use her as an example. Do y'all really think that Dr. Heavenly would be sending information to other bloggers when she can literally go on her own platform and make money off of it? But again, I do understand too that sometimes they want to just be sneaky, sneaky. So neither here nor there. I'm not, again, I ain't even, I don't care about Robin sending the information to the other bloggers because they all do it. Like I said, they all do it. Um, I think it was just the point of, girl, you could have just, said what the hell you wanted to say but anyway i'm done with that child so basically we get to the point where they want to know if robin and candace can move forward i wrote right here in my notes they can't and again again I think we're very clear on why we are where we are as far as people leaving the show people allegedly getting fired because you know, again, your boss asked you point blank, can you move forward? And I don't feel like they made any, um, I don't feel like they made any progress with resolving whatever they needed to resolve. Okay. Of course, Candace started crying. Giselle made fun of Candace for crying. Andy told her she was being mean. Again, like, I need y'all to be reading. When I say y'all, you know I ain't talking about y'all. You know I ain't talking about the tribe. I'm talking about people in general. I need y'all to be reading between the lines. Your boss was telling you to stop. You were being mean. Andy usually don't even really be getting into it like that. Andy usually just let them do what the hell they do. I mean, to a, to a certain degree. But the fact that Andy was like, Giselle, you being, you're being mean right now. Like, that was really mean. Karen was telling Giselle to stop. Now, let's be clear. We know that that Candace can be very performative with her tears, with the tissue. We get it. Okay, we get all of that. But again, again, if we're trying to move forward and we're trying to find some resolve, that's not the way to do it. Uh, they talked about Karen being a fence humper or whatever. So then we get into Candace and Giselle. They had to play it back for Giselle for her because Giselle was saying, I never said he made me go in the room. And Karen had to tell Giselle she said it. Andy had to tell Giselle she said it. And they did, you know, roll back the beautiful bean footage. Remember, when they're doing the reunion, they don't have, they're not rolling the footage. Production goes back and finds those that that, that footage that we see, they splice that in. So in the moment, they were trying to tell Giselle you did say it and that's why Giselle was like well I, I didn't say it I didn't say it but you did see that's what happens when you change your damn story because listen uh Judge Judy then told us if you tell the truth you ain't got to have a good memory because the truth don't change the truth doesn't change so when you said he made me go into a room and he made me and I, I it made me uncomfortable 
No, that is exactly what you said. They played the beautiful bean footage and you said that. Now, I don't agree with Candace equating that to sexual assault because there was no assault. However, comma, it is a dangerous narrative, which I have said from the beginning. I have said from the beginning, it is a dangerous narrative to put out there that Chris potentially put Giselle in a in a position where she did feel uncomfortable and she felt like she felt like he was making her um feel unsafe. Okay. So Giselle said both, Cynthia. She said he asked her, but he also said he made her. She said both. She said both. Um So yeah, that is that's it right there, right? Um Here's what I'm going to say. I think we addressed it at the beginning, but here's what I'm going to say about the whole death <coughs> threat thing. I think collectively as a fan base, it is ridiculous for people to take it to that level, period. On any franchise over any of this bullshit. Period. Full stop. The fact, and I believe Giselle that she got death threats. I absolutely believe Giselle that she got death threats, right? But I do believe that they've all been threatened. You know, I do believe that they all get threatened. And I'm not lessening that because those are your children, right? Those are your children. So I, you have a right to feel the way you feel. However, comma, to lay all of that at the feet of Candace, eh, I think that's a stretch. Giselle, you have made more than enough enemies all by yourself. Like, what we're not going to do is act like Giselle is a fan favorite and Giselle doesn't piss people off and Giselle doesn't make people angry and push the envelope and lie and manipulate and cause issues. Like, we're not going to sit here and act like Giselle was the angel until last season. Giselle, you have created, you have created your whole, your own fan base of people that don't like you. But I will also say, see, here's where, here's what y'all don't like about me and I love y'all anyway. I can give y'all both sides and not take a side. So y'all sometimes you want me to take a side. I said this last season also. I said it last season and I stand by it. I think it was reckless for Candace to throw out the colorism narrative and to come at those two women the way in which she did and, and make it about color. I'm not arguing colorism. I ain't about to get into no debate about colorism. I think that it was reckless for Candace to throw that out last year. Because you know what I find to be very interesting? Last year, Candace was leading the colorism brigade, brigade against the Green Eye Bandits. I think she even threw Mia in for good measure. But it was funny a couple of weeks ago when she was on Angela Yee. What was that? Last week she was on Angela Yee. She said, I want to be clear. I don't think Robin is a colorist. But that's not what you said last season. That's not what you said last year. You see what I'm saying? So now you want to walk it back. Now you want to walk that shit back. But that's not what you said last season. So when it comes to Candace and Giselle, they have both behaved badly. And I'm not going to sit here and try to say which one is better than the other. I ain't about to get into that. I'm not. I think that what Giselle did, I told you guys last year, I think that what Giselle did crossed a line. I think it crossed the line. You know, if y'all want to put out there that y'all think that Candace's husband is cheating on her, 
listen, they do that on all of the shows. They always talk about people's marriages, whatever, right? They did it on New Jersey. They've done it on Potomac. Uh, they, I mean, on um, Atlanta. They've done it on um, um, Beverly Hills. Like that part, whatever. But to add that extra, you know, may, like that that undercurrent of of sexual harassment. It's a problem for me. Once again, Andy wants to know, can we move forward? Is there a path to moving forward? Candace said she's willing to take responsibility and accept the fact. What did she say she was willing to say? She said she wasn't going to accept that what she said led to the, the death threats, but she was willing to accept what it came to say. She was, hold on, maybe I wrote it in my notes, Cheryl. Hold on. Child, I remember. All I know is I don't think they came to no sort of meeting of the minds, child. Giselle wasn't really ready. Um, she said that she will apologize for saying... Um, May, she said, Chris did not make me go into the room, um, but he made me feel uncomfortable. <sighs> they ain't go nowhere. They ain't move forward. And even at the end, I feel like Candace, Candace finally acquiesced at the end, but she also said that she has nothing to say to Giselle. Like, there's no need for them to talk. Well, you can't be on the show, but I think, I'm going to be honest with you, I think Candace had already decided that she was leaving. Because it didn't sound like she was really trying to. I think she had already decided when she did the reunion. But the rumor is that Candace is pregnant. I think she might be pregnant. Because remember at the beginning they asked her about. So does that mean you're putting your. You know your plans of motherhood on hold again. Because you're making. Um, you're, you're in the studio making new music. Um, And she kind of went back and forth. Like she wouldn't give a definitive answer. I think she might be pregnant. So, oh, I definitely think they're trying. Um, After hearing your commentary about this episode, I'm starting to believe that Candace knew she was being fired. Well, Candace wasn't fired. Candace wasn't fired. Now, you mean that she was going to be fired, so she quit rather than be fired? I don't think Candace was going to be fired. I don't think, I don't think Candace was going to be fired. Um... Because lover or hater, Candace is an asset to the show. Lover or hater. And y'all know I'm up and down with Candace. Y'all know that I'm I'm more against Candace than for Candace. Y'all know, because Candace, y'all, y'all know, listen, listen. Y'all know that I think Candace's mouth is very reckless. And I don't, I don't, I don't adhere to. I don't adhere to the thought process of sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt me. I just don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't. And I do think words can be hurtful. And I do think that words can get you in trouble. And sometimes that trouble comes on the other end of a fist. I mean, I'm sorry, it does. And I'm not defending. I'm just saying, I understand. Anyway, moving on. I ain't about to go down that road. Okay. Then they got into the whole thing with Chris and his cheating scandal. And here's where Robin still pisses me off. So Robin wants to bring up this whole cheating scandal. Knowing good and damn well that that woman recanted her story. And then Robin going to say, well, she recanted, but didn't she come back later and say that she lied? So so, so we supposed to believe her now? Were you lying then or are you lying now? Like the woman came out here. First of all, her story didn't add up from the beginning. If you go back. To my commentary, Chef Don Don's commentary, and a whole bunch of other YouTubers that did commentary after that Tasha K interview, we literally undid 90% of what that woman said about Chris in her interview with Tasha K within 24 hours. They proved that that whole, that whole paperwork from the, from the abortion doctor was fake. They proved that the dates did not line up of when she said she saw Chris, how long she knew Chris. Hell, she couldn't even keep her story straight on how she met the man. Okay. Then she came back later on and said she lied. Then she came back and said, well, no, I didn't lie. I told the truth the first time. Girl, bye. 
So the fact that you brought it up again, that just brings me back. I get so irritated because Robin, as much as you don't like Candace, as much as you want Chris to be a F boy, that's fine. But she ain't the answer. This woman that, you know, she ain't the answer. Now, Candace, I didn't like the fact that you sat there and act like you ain't know what, what, the, what they was talking about when they was talking about the pictures and the text messages. Girl, you knew exactly what they was talking about. All right. So I wrote in my notes, Giselle and Candace can't move forward. Karen and Robin, child, they can't, they can't move forward either because <laughs> Andy was like, can y'all say anything nice about each other? So Robin says three nice things about Karen and Karen was being shady about her three nice things about, <laughs> about, um, um, about Robin And Robin was like, well, would, would you still be friends with somebody that came for your husband and did this and did that and da-da-da-da-da? Baby, once again, Karen just shut you up with one line. Karen said, but they do it all the time and I move on. Girl, y'all been attacking Robin and Ray. You literally attacked Robin. I mean, you literally attacked Karen at the beginning of the reunion when you were trying to insinuate that Karen had been sleeping around on Ray and that's why she don't know how many men she had sex with in the last five years. You literally just did it. And for you to turn around now and play victim, like everybody just attacks you and Juan, you and Juan, you and Juan, like you haven't been a part of attacking Wendy and her husband, Giselle and her husband, Monique and her husband, Hell, even Ashley and, and, and Michael, even though they just, you know. But, girl, you don't you don't get to play victim to people's uh, marriage being attacked. You don't get to play victim, Robin. And for you to throw it at Karen as if Karen is supposed to tell people to stop. No, don't say that about Robin and Juan. Girl, bye. You literally insinuated you and your and your and uh you and Robin to um to Giselle's Batman. Y'all literally had a whole conversation and insinuated that Wendy went out and had plastic surgery to keep her husband because word on the streets was he was out in them streets. Stop it. That blogger is really windmilling air for Robin on Twitter. Really? Sure. They've been coming for Karen since day one, season one. And guess what? They're going to do it again next season because, unfortunately, Karen, you gave them a whole storyline next year. Baby, they're going to give you the blues. I'm sorry. <laughs> they're going to give you the blues. I, I, and I love you, Karen, but, baby, they're going to give you the blues. I don't know how you're going to hold it. I don't know what you're going to do, but you got time to figure it out because they ain't even going to start filming until the fall. So you got time to figure it out, okay? Then we go on break. Y'all. Y'all. You know what, Lisa Wilson? You know what? I'm going to put on my producer hat. If I were Kern, whether you see, here's the thing, whether you mean it or not, and I'm not, and please, nobody that may that may currently be in any sort of um, Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous, please, I don't want you to be offended by what I'm getting ready to say because I know it's very serious. Um, I have family. I've I've been a part of um, Al-Anon, which are you know family members of people with addiction. So I'm very clear. Okay, I don't want nobody to take what I'm getting ready to say the wrong way. Okay, but putting that aside, if I were Karen Huger, Grandom. I'm telling you what my opening, my opening sequence next season, the first thing you're going to see of Karen Huger next season is Karen Huger coming out of a church because they can't go inside because it's anonymous for a reason. You're going to see me coming up out of a church or, you know, wherever they, I know back then, I know when I would go to the al meetings, they would have, they would be at the church. But you would see me coming up out of a church 
right? Maybe you would see me talking to my sponsor if they were willing to come on camera. You might see me getting into my brand new car because we know that the Maserati is dead. And I would have a chip in my hand for one month, two months, three months, four months, whatever month you want, boo. And I would let the camera pan down on that chip in my hand. And then I would go directly into my confessional and I would tell the story. Now, that's if she can talk about it at that point because of the legal, because let's be clear, this is a legal situation. So she may be very limited in what she can say, but I'm telling you that's what I'm, that's how I'm playing it. I'm playing it. That's how I'm playing it. Now, again, that is no disrespect to people who are really, truly um, members of Alcoholics Anonymous or have family members that are or Narcotics Anonymous. Again, I have family, been there, done that. So I get it. I'm not I'm not making light of it. OK, and I'm not using it as a prop. But I am saying for Karen to get in front of this story and to yield some some sympathy Baby, you're going to have to come down here and you're going to have to humble yourself and let us know what it is, what it is to the is. Right, like what Portia did with that fake anger, anger management class. Right. You know what I mean? Um, maybe if Giselle feels comfortable enough filming with somebody, maybe her sitting down. I'm going to tell you the best person she would sit. I'm going to tell you the best person she could sit down and talk to last next season would be Giselle. One, one, if Giselle, if Robin really did leave, Giselle going to be looking for a friend. Two, even with you and Giselle going through as much of what you've gone through, Giselle probably is the closest, the person you're the closest to on that cast. That's the real, like, honestly. And number three, it'll neutralize Giselle a little bit. If you reach out to, to Giselle to make Giselle your ally, it will neutralize her a little bit with her coming at coming for you. She may not be so hard to come for you if you made her your ally in this situation. But that's just me. Kern, that's, listen. And if y'all do that next season, I want my money. I want a consultant fee. If y'all take my idea, I want my consultant fee. Moving right along. Last but not least, they go to lunch and we see Mia. Can I ask a question? I know we be giving me a lot. First of all, shout out to the 300 people in the room. If you haven't already hit that like button, if you could please do so um, across both channels, I got 300 people. If y'all haven't already hit that like button, I wish you really would. I appreciate you so much. If you're just in the cloud, go ahead and subscribe, honey. We be having a good time. We, we do the things, okay? Um, and y'all know donations are not required over here, but they are accepted and they are appreciated, okay? Now, Y'all, what Mia got between her legs? What does Mia have between her legs? Mia is literally on the phone with her boyfriend while her husband is behind her speaking to the boyfriend. And they talking like they boys. Hey, man, what's up? Hey, what's up, man? I see you got that black on. Look good in that black. Yeah, man, I got to represent. What you representing? What, what, what you mean you got? What, what you got to represent? Uh, 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 G, what, what, what the man name? Shit, I can't even remember the man name now. What you representing? Sir, what? Oh, <laughs> thank you, Carol. She said for producer. Yes, honey, they Carol, they need to call me. I'll help. I'll hook them right on up, honey. I be having ideas. I said, Gordon, thank you, Ostry. I said, what the fuck? Excuse my language. I, I'm sorry, on Easter, too. I said, what the? And I can't even be mad at Mia. Cause she not, it's out in the open. I can't even be mad at Mia. I said, girl. So they go back out on the stage and they get started on Mia's um, storyline, right? Mia was like, 
explaining that this was her childhood sweetheart. She said that, you know, he moved to Atlanta because he wanted to pursue his career in radio and um, and that she went on to do her thing because she was in school and yada, yada, yada. And then she said, but she did, you know, hook back up with him one time. Like there was, I don't think she meant one time they hooked up, but like during a, during a window of time in her marriage to Gordon, they hooked up. Baby, Wendy said, me, I just think you should know. I don't know what you and Gordon got going on, okay? But Gordon told us. He's telling the people that Ink came by the house and tried to kidnap Jeremiah because he believes Jeremiah belongs to him. Baby, Ashley says, still? <laughs> like, y'all ain't had no, no DNA test to eliminate that situation yet. Baby, Andy said, is that what happened? Andy said, is that what happened? She said, yeah, Andy. Yeah, he thinks, he thinks that Jeremiah is his son. Yeah, how Wendy ain't had her ass whooped yet? She said her and Jacqueline are friends again. We're probably closer than ever because that whole situation was some bullshit. I'm like, how Mia ain't got her ass kicked yet? I don't even understand it, y'all. I mean, I feel like Andy need to pull a Carlos King and get them to do a DNA test, honey. Remember when they did that DNA test down to the Bell Collective? It was too much. And that's where the episode ended, child. Somebody did a video about the DNA test. Oh, they did do a DNA test? Child. Season one, when Katie was on Robin about her complexion and saying she was most likely over 50 white, nobody said a word. It was more like over 50. So, so Mia lied if Ink thinks Jeremiah is his. No, I think that, well, according to Mia, she told G that Jeremiah might not be his, but it sounds like she didn't tell Ink. I don't know. Listen, it's Mia, and I'm not, what I'm not getting ready to do, I'm not getting ready to sit here and waste my good brain cells trying to unravel Mia's lies. Because I find it very interesting that Mia conveniently didn't tell none of the story about how she was still living with Ink when her and Gordon met, and how Gordon bought her a car. And Ink didn't know that 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 uh, that Gordon bought that car until he got the paperwork that came and saw the paperwork when it came in the mail. Like we ain't gonna sit here and pretend like Mia didn't leave a big chunk of that damn story out. Hey Phil, wait a minute, hold on. Phil said, "Thank you for being a member for eleven months." Mill said, "Don't believe it's a scam for a storyline, fake child." Seems like after Gordon's stuff stopped working, he realized and accepted that Mia had needs. I think Gordon knew before things stopped working, Mia was in the street. He did know. He said it, he said it on the last episode that Mia had been cheating the whole time they've been married. And I believe it. I believe that Mia has been cheating the whole time they were married. I absolutely believe that. But I also believe G been cheating. I don't believe G. Listen, G is no angel in all of this. Let's be clear. G been cheating. Me have been cheating. They already admitted that they would that they had threesomes and they would have sex with other people. So I mean, it's not like that never happened. It's not like that. That's new information, right? Gordon said, "If you want fair, go to the carnival." I said, "I know that's right." Me be lying. Me be cheating. Okay. Episode eleven. She said that she did IVF. Now she doesn't know who. Jer
I, I, I don't have nothing else. I got nothing. I got nothing, y'all. I'm done. I, I got nothing. Let me say this. I honestly believe that Mia and Gordon have have perpetrated a false storyline from day one. I think that Mia and Gordon put forth a certain... Carlos King did a video seven days ago with the title Paternity. Did anybody watch it? Because I didn't even see it. I didn't even see the end of the, um, the video. I think that... I think that they lied. Well, listen, they've been lying from day one. We know they lied about Mia and her alleged uh, 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 CEO status. We know that's part of the reason why Gordon ass ain't got a job now because he was out here gallivanting and making it seem like Mia was really running a company and he had retired and his brothers were sitting over there going, what you mean he retired? Um, I'm sorry. We don't need her running our company. Uh, he's supposed to be running the company. Okay. Okay. She specifically said Jeremiah when she stated she did IVF to NECA. That was from episode nine. Right. Mia had been lying since she couldn't tell them how old she was. Like, let's be clear. Mia, we're not going to sit here and pretend like Mia didn't remember her age. Anyway. I'm going to say that part one was really good. Don't forget tomorrow night, we will be back with the Whether You Like It or Not panel. I think we are going to be on Scotty's channel tomorrow. Um, um, it's either going to be Scotty or Yah, um, Yah's channel. But I will definitely post it on my community wall and let you guys know. We'll do our live Martha's Vineyard review tomorrow afternoon before the Whether You Like It or Not panel, honey. And we're going we're gonna to leave it there. Because I ain't about to sit here and waste no brain cells on Mia and her lies. I told y'all I ain't doing it. We're going to wait till next week when Mia has her whole segment. And we will break it down further. But I'm not going to waste no brain cells tonight on it. I ain't. I ain't. I ain't. Now she didn't bad, but lie about that bad BBL well. Hey, CC Free. Yeah, part one was good. I, I have to admit, part one was good. All right, you guys. Let me get ready to get out of here. Um, Again, like I said, we'll do Martha's Vineyard tomorrow. The Whether You Like It or Not panel will either be at Yaw's place or at um Scotty's place, but I will definitely post it on the community wall or on Instagram. You guys will know. And I will talk to y'all later. If you have not already hit the like button, please do on your way out the door. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thank you for the cash app. Thank you for the um, membership um, message, um, Phil. Thank you for the cash app, Carol. I want to make sure. Yep, Carol, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys, okay? Um, and I will talk to y'all later. Hold on, wait a minute. So, it's at Scotty's. Yeah, I believe it's going to be at Scotty's. All right. Mwah. Peace.